Listen, good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Art As Well, your weekly source of inspiration, enlightenment and connection with artists throughout Ireland and uh, beyond. And I'm delighted this morning to, to welcome our, our special guest, Blaise Smith. Now, Blaise was born um, in 1967 and studied visual art at the National College of Art and Design in Dublin. He's had numerous solo exhibitions at the Molesworth Gallery, as well as the Hunt Museum in Limerick and the Visual in Carlow. He has been selected three times for the BP Portrait Exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery in London, and in 2014 was included in a major retrospective publication on the leading exhibitors there over the past 10 years. He has completed several major public commissions, among some roadworks in 1999, a set of 24 paintings depicting men and machines of Cork County Council for its centenary. He has won many awards, including the Adams Award presented at the RHA in 2004 and the Irish News Prize presented at the Royal Ulster Academy in 2012. He was elected uh, an associate member of the Royal Hibernian Academy, that's RHA, uh, in 2012. So let's go straight down to Kilkenny and say good morning to Blaze. Good morning, Blaze. How are you? Uh, uh, good morning, Alan. How are you doing? Um, That's been grand. Sunny day, which is baking the rocks outside my studio at the moment. So uh, it's kind of, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm actually not even that used to having this much light in here because I don't get up that early to see yeah. the sunshine here. I, yeah. uh, You're I, a late bird, are you? Oh, yeah. I start at about 11 every day. Oh, you know? okay. Maybe, maybe later. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I'm, tell I'm, me, where, where exactly are you? I know you're in Kilkenny, but... Uh, I'm between, in a little village uh, called Dungarvan, between um, uh, Thomastown and Gorm. And right. in fact, if you'd like to see more of Dungarvan, you can do so during the Kilkenny Arts Festival because I will be doing, I'll be continuing my project to paint the village. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll do portraits of everybody who lives in the village here. Yes. Uh, and that'll be... Uh, live streamed, uh, you can find it on my Facebook, and it'll also be it'll be actually live in the garden of the Butler Gallery for seven days, from the seventh to the fourteenth. A different person every day. I'll be painting them and chatting to them over about four hours. So that'll be. I'm actually, you know, totally stressed out about the pressure of it. Actually, because it's it's a tough gig. Seven four. I'd say it's a tough gig. Yeah. And, and 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 do you, you start and finish in one day? Yeah, into my portrait. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can. I have one here from last year. Yeah, as a head and shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to grab this. Uh, there we go. Yeah, just see that there. You can see it there. That sort of painting there. So that was done in in this young fellow's garden. There's a movie of me doing it on on my That's Facebook funny. page. Or knocking around, you can kind of see it there. I can. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Zoom now, we're, we're on the further camera. You know that. Yeah, I do know that, but I'm afraid that if I, if I switch this one, the sunshine's yeah. going to be behind us, and oh, that'll okay. cause all sorts of other, you know what I mean? It'll just be black. It'll be a big black rectangle. I'll try it. Let's yeah. see, because it might... Uh, we'll try this one, actually. Let's face it. Yeah, I can see myself there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's much better. Yeah, much better. You like the sunshine is coming, so you can have the exposed yeah. bit or the unexposed bit. Yeah. So And, and how, how, how many hours would that take, Blaze? I spent four hours on that, you know, so four hours. I, and it's, it's kind of not quite enough time. Mm -hmm. It's just I think that's all that the sitter is capable of before they begin absolutely detesting me, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I, I did, I think, six of them last year mm -hmm. in a row. And it was all great in the middle of lockdown, you know, and uh, there's a lot of people tuned in, watched it and, and uh you know, uh, but this year I realized in Ireland anyway, people's appetite for an online event is very low. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? mm. And me, and so we're all beginning to go to things. And um, I quickly improvised only about two weeks ago. I sort of rang up the butler and said, could I do this in your garden? And they were kind enough to say yes. So yeah. it's an outdoor event under a tent and hopefully we'll have weather like this and I'll be under a tent and everybody else will be getting Fried, but it'll also we we'll also have all the cameras set up that I have around the room here. Yeah, to, and are there other artists doing, doing a similar thing during it? Uh, no, just me. No. Just uh, no, I mean, I, I've had a project like this. These are like the sketches for uh, an idea to do a portrait of of a village. You know, mm. uh, 
but I do much bigger paintings. So these are like the studies in a sense, you know? Yes, yes. And uh, I mean, what's interesting about Charlie there, the painting I just showed you, is that he has his own herd of zwartable sheep, which are dark brown sheep, a very particular breed. Mm. And he bought the first of them out of his confirmation money. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and from there now, I think he's about 35 of them. So he's about 17 now, you know? Very so, impressive, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, you know what I mean? That's kind of interesting. And everybody, you know, you drive to a little village in Ireland and you think, oh, it's all just farmers, you know, but it's not. Everybody's very interesting. I mean, uh, as Joyce said about Dubliners, he said, you know, I'm trying to uh, find the universal in particular, you know, mm. and people have lots of, uh, how can I put it, uh, corners on them, you know, that are, you wouldn't suspect. People are people are always multi-layered, you know. So, yes. so I, there's a guy who takes his plane off across the fields here from me every day, every Saturday. <laughs> so yeah. he's like, he just knows anybody has a plane and he just gets up and flies around for an hour and lands. <laughs> then does it again. And, you know, you just wouldn't think. And actually, I called over to him to ask him, to ask him, could I paint him? And he said, oh, I must show you something at the end of the conversation. He brought me out and showed me that he was making gesso panels, mm -hmm. uh, which is, because uh, he said he learned to do it in Australia when he was a young man, and a nun had asked him to do them because she wanted to paint icons. Yes. So I make gesso panels as well. Mm -hmm. It's a really, you know, rabbit skin glue, whiting, timber, such a weird, obscure technique, you know, to find two people in the same village less than a mile apart <laughs> making gesso <laughs> panels. Like, so. Yeah. so I like that sort of craziness of, of life. And, uh, you know, yeah. and also, I mean, the real reason for it is as a portrait painter, you know, I get commissioned to do the great and the good the whole time. Mm -hmm. And the world is full of paintings of the great and the good. All the galleries are full of kings, queens, bishops, popes, uh, saints, you know, but there are very few paintings really of ordinary people. They're almost genre paintings. You know, there's, there's Vermeer's The Milkmaid. Uh, you know, there's not really not many of mm. the ordinary people. So in a way, it's a bit like writing. They don't have a voice. And I really think in a civic society, we should be getting more paintings commissioned of just ordinary people by the state. Yes. You know, yeah. now I'm, I'm saying that as the person who is currently commissioned to paint Brian Cowan for the doll. So I like that. You know, so I'm doing his official portrait at the moment. Right. Uh, you know, uh, which I can't show you anything of because it's all the amount of... Under wraps. Yeah, the amount of press requests for information initially were quite high. They're really yeah. digging around trying to, so, trying to get something out of me. So I'm saying no more now, that's it. But tell me, do you, do, you work, do you work from life or do you work from photographs or a combination of both? I work from life mostly. Uh, sometimes for various reasons you can't. Um, I'll be talking about a painting in a bit, uh, a portrait that was is posthumous, basically. So, uh, but I'll be talking about more in terms about how it's set up. Um, yes. Uh, you know, but ideally, I work from life. I do a lot of uh, paint on plein air paintings like these here. Mm -hmm. in my uh, I will switch to this camera now, which was three, two, that one. You know, so I would just go. That's that's literally the field down the road here. Yes. Uh, and I would go down and paint that in a couple of hours, having maybe walked the dogs and found that spot and said, I'll come back here now. Mm. Uh, and but these are all very loosely painted in a good way, you know, yeah. and I try to always feed that looseness of painting back into, I'm just going to focus this up here on this. Yeah, no, that looks good. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I so I'm trying to build that looseness back into my more, like the more elaborate paintings, like the one that's behind, uh, you can see it there, you know, that's actually quite loosely painted. It looks detailed because it's big, you know? Yes, yes. So, so would you do sort of pre preliminary sketches in, in on a small canvas or board before doing a large one like that? Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I, they're really small though. Like it's more, they're more color studies. So it'd be this sort of thing here. Um, so this is a small thing. I had a very big painting of the RHA last year. Yeah, I, don't know I think we'll be seeing that, won't we? What? We'll be seeing that in, in, in its full. I think we, you, yeah, in the slideshow you have it put in, um, don't you? Yeah, of yeah. the actual painting. But this is the little study I did just to kind of go, how am I going to do all these greens in this particular painting? Okay. And what is the ground that I'm going, that's going to work underneath it? So it's got a, for the technicians among you, it's got a raw number ground in order to make the, it's, so it's, that's a red, brown, mm -hmm. dark. 
Yeah. Make it a dark steep and the greens hop forward. So so uh, it's all quite carefully figured out. Or, sure. I mean, it's yeah. careful for me. It's obviously incredibly untidy otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Blaze, let, let's before we go on to sort of the technical aspects of things, yes. and I want to do a, I want to do a little studio tour. I want you to talk about your process and I want to show images um, yeah. of your work. But before we do that, can you fill us in a little bit about your career? Because you weren't you weren't an artist from day one, were you? Well, sorry, you well, might have been, but that's not necessarily your path. Yeah, I, well, the path is a bit uh, broken, I think. Would be yeah. um, well, I think people would find that interesting. Uh, so you kindly said, I, 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 I think you said graduate from NCAG. Well, I didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped out. Yes, yeah. No, so, I mean, what... what um, so basically, I was a bit of a prodigy. Uh, I I can actually show you because I took I've got it ready last night. So I did this drawing here when I was uh, seventeen. Yes. Uh, so and I did this draw this painting. So did you do art in school? Uh, the teaching was shit, like you know. But I did that painting as you see there. Yes, the year the year afterwards, you know. So I and I won the Texco art competition, which is a big children's art competition here right. in Ireland. And I also had a really really bad relationship with school. There was bad art teachers. They did art as an extra class. It was a rugby playing school, mm -hmm. Johnny Sexton School actually. Was it? Yeah. We playing Dublin school. You know, all boys. Uh, they really did not see the point of art whatsoever uh, mm -hmm. that, you know they might have thought they were being benign but you know you were constantly being advised not to do that so anyway they eventually threw me out in fifth year mm -hmm. which was which was basically a row over drawing you know would be started out as a row of you know why are you drawing at the back of the class and I was not very articulate so I just told him to fuck off mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so I had a very so I got expelled yeah. the headmaster was trying to fuck off quite a lot yeah you know, I just had enough of them anyway, you know, so I ended up in, a, in another school. That was OK. And the, there was more art tuition, certainly. But look, I was already able to draw like that. I was able to draw better than most mm -hmm. than most people in, in the country already. You know, I mean, to be perfectly blunt, you know. And um, so anyway, I ended up in art college without I didn't even see my leaving cert, which is the, um, you know, and uh, I did art. Art, that's all in the yeah. as an exam. <laughs> I, di I didn't realize I didn't re realize you went straight from school into art college. Yes, I did at 17. That was also oh. a mistake in you know, because I was actually 17 mm -hmm. years of age in first year NCAD okay. or whatever pre diploma. You know, it was good. I met a lot of really good people and so on, but I was I was set to fight. Do you know what I mean? From authority from the get go. Yeah. And at the same time, NCAD was set up to not be interested in painting. So you were given to understand within a couple of weeks, you know, that um, painting was dead, you know, and that wasn't really something that was really, you know, worth pursuing. You know, why don't you go up to photography and mess around there? Or, you know, you know, like it just wasn't cool. You know, you could do it, but you were swimming against the tide, you know, and, and as a 17 year old, I wasn't going to be able to to fight that, you know, and, and I did do all these, I did do a few paintings and I really enjoyed like, you know, in first year painting, which is kind of second year, you end up doing an eight week block of uh, life drawing at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. So of course I was totally in my element. I really enjoyed it, you know, I had an absolutely great time, you know, and I was also, as usual, the best in the class, even in the national college, you know, so, um, you know, but I, I, some of the tutors were not too, and he came up behind me one day and I was painting a big painting. He said, what are you going to be when you, when you leave college, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I hope to be a painter. And he said, a house painter. So that's not very nice, is it? I ended up in a, a, you know, in a, in a tutorial with him. I was, make, I was living in a flat on my, you know, that I was paying for myself out of uh, money I was earning from doing graphics for a few shops in Dublin at the time. And I was also doing my college work to a certain extent, but not much. But anyway, I filled up my folio with some of these graphic things just to say, look here, I'm still kind of working away. And when I showed them all, he said, he said to me, what's all this stuff? And I said, well, you know, I'm just going to show, I'm not doing nothing. They're, they're sort of cartoons and stuff like this, and ink, you know, comic books and so on. 
and uh, for ads, you know, and he was saying, but this isn't art, you should be concentrating 100% on only painting. And I said, well, you know, this is paying my rent, you know, I thought, you know, I may not have even said it, I thought it was obvious, like I was saying, you know, I need this, this is what I'm doing to work, you know? Yeah. And he said, well, you shouldn't be doing that. And I said, well, that's really rich. Mm. And he said, I'm never speaking to you again. And he never did. So I left NCAD a year or two later. Right. Uh, you know, and... Uh, that was an unfortunate I ended up, I ended up on the board of NCAD mm. about three years ago that was doing a, was a beautiful irony. <laughs> 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 I, also, I also ended up getting a big commission a couple of years ago to paint in a school for a whole year, you know? Um, mm. And uh, it was beautiful irony to be able to stand at the back of the class and paint with big easel, you know? Yes. Uh, I joked, I remember saying, you know, uh, they say, you know, school days are the happier, happiest days of your life. I said, this second time around definitely has been. I really enjoyed myself at that school painting, you know? Did you? Yeah. Kids and students coming up and chat, because a school about people. It was also so different from the school I had been in. You know, if somebody said they wanted to be an astronaut in that school, it was just a simple sort of comprehensive type school up in Carlo, you know. Mm-hmm. If somebody said they wanted to be an astronaut, I saw this happening in front of me. They went to the teacher and said, I want to be an astronaut. The teacher wouldn't say, listen, son, you know, or young person, um, that's not really, you know, you're in Carlo. Let's get real here. They, they say, okay, well, let's look at, you know, NASA's website. Let's see what you've got to do. Mm. you know what I mean it wasn't, yeah, yeah. It wasn't immediately slammed it was kind of like, okay well what, what, what steps yeah. need to be taken and that was so very different from the very closed world of 19, late 1970s and 1980s mm. Dublin and in fact you know um, so I came out of art college thinking you know right well painting is just not a viable anything I had done a lot of uh, photography and video stuff in NCAD and I had decided really also that you know if you want to reach a lot of people and change the culture because after all if you go to art college it's not simply like I want to paint it's like I want to make a statement I want to paint Guernica you know I want to paint something that's going to change people's lives I want to make something that's going to make people think differently that was our you know improve the world or in some in some political statement or something like that so it was all highly politicized and you had to so I, I um, wanted to, you know, make a difference, I suppose. And I didn't think the painting was ever going to do it because let's face it, painting is obscure, it turns out. <laughs> Very obscure, really. And uh, I thought the way forward then would be to make television programmes. And I got into making TV documentaries and stuff and I tried to, you know, I, I, you know I'm actually in the commitments. I'll just throw that in there. You can look at it later. <laughs> oh, who were you? Who were you? I was the manager of the pool hall. How are you? <laughs> so I was actually in the running for the main part, and that was written in the consolation prize, which was very nice of Alan Parker to do that. And I would have had a lot of auditions and so on. So that was kind of funny. But I mean, it was one week's work in the middle of like 1990 in Dublin. I mean, the reason I even went into the audition was because as I was walking along, it was this open audition, it was a huge queue going down um, Nassau Street or Dawson Street into the mansion house. And I basically recognized most of the people from my dole queue, you know. And I stood in beside one of them. I said, what's going on here? And they said, there's an audition for this film, you know. And I just kept chatting to them and I ended up sort of easing myself into the top of the queue. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as you do, <laughs> uh, which yeah. you do in the dole queue regularly as well. <laughs> you know, uh, so, so, you know, anyway, I ended up um, doing that for, i say, it was great. Because basically you'd be asked at the pub, you know, what are you doing? And it was like an existential question. Well, what am I doing? I'm doing fucking nothing. Mm. You know, the, the idea of selling a painting in Dublin at the time to me was like being an astronaut. It was, you know, I remember my one of my good tutors, Kerry Clark, a great painter, um, you know, took some paintings from me. I have a painting somewhere here, actually, weirdly. I won't be able to find it. Um, but he took a painting, a couple of paintings from me, you know, Mm-hmm. to try and sell them to somebody who was looking for, you know, young students. And I could certainly paint, you know, but I, I had painted a dental chair. I had one in my apartment, as you do. Mm-hmm. And it was a huge dental chair that we had found in a skip, you know. So I painted, but you know what I mean? Like, the idea of it being commercial, nobody even mentioned the idea in the whole of my college career, which was about five years, been dropping out, dropping back in again, and dropping out again. Mm-hmm. There was just no concept of this being of, you know, a gallery or any sort of like sales. And they still don't really do 
business, you know. I always, if I'm asked to teach students or do a talk to students, say, right, I'll give them the business talk, you know, how to get a gallery, how to, you know, make money, how to price things, you know. And uh, tell me, please, do, do they not teach that in art college nowadays? No. I know they, they didn't, but do they now? Well, not basically, basically you're, 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 you're churning people out who, who are self-employed. Anecdotally, no. Okay. There's sometimes talks about how to apply for grants, but I don't regard that as a, as a business. No. no. You know, that's one client, the Arts Council generally. They are not going to sustain you for long. Uh, you know, you need, you, need, you need to know how to, you know. Generate so, your in, in a sense, I was lucky. So I ended up basically in a commercial company in Trinity College in the computer science department doing videos for them. Hmm. Uh, with a really good graphic designer who's a school friend of mine, as things work. You know, so we would have been close in school because we were both, he was much cleverer than I was, didn't get into fights though, <laughs> and still doesn't. Uh, his name is Niall Sweeney, so he would work with the photographer Eamon Doyle a lot, uh, designing his shows, designing his books. And he and I are really, you know, just old pals since we were seven, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, Niall said, we need somebody to film, so we need to come in and do some part-time work. And I came in and then I got a job. So I worked there for about three or four years in the computer science department of Trinity in multimedia, which at the time, like, nobody even knew what that was. You know, it was 1992, 93. The internet was in its infancy. Um, you know, it was, if you said to somebody, I'm doing, you know, interface design, which is what I was doing, they just went, what? Like, mm-hmm. there was no... We were doing CD-ROMs. We did stuff with the National Gallery, this kind of stuff. Yeah. However, that, that all fed in then, because basically what happened was I, he and I took, had an office then in our house, and we were all working on computer stuff, and I was doing, like, you know, videos and presentation videos and uh, websites and so on in their infancy for things. So this has all, you know, been really useful to me in my later career. But what happened was, anyway, I decided to, with my partner, Orla, we... Um, began looking at houses in Kilkenny, which was the best decision I was ever party to in my life uh, because it completely changed us. This was, I hadn't painted for maybe eight or nine years when I moved here at all. Not picked up a brush, not drawn anything, nothing. And in fact, uh, Eamon Coleman, who we just spoke to earlier on, was the underbidder on this house that I'm currently in. Probably, yeah. But he might not have been... Uh, he and Paul, he might not have been quite. We'd already been looking for a year. Maybe you know the way if you're if you're mentally in it, you yeah. just you go, you really go. You don't, you don't. So we we got this house. Sorry, Eamon, but Eamon's got an even nicer house now. As it turns out, so that's what happens, you know. Um, so uh, and, and a bigger studio as it happens. But um, so I, we moved down here, and literally, like I was working at screens, like you know, like I am now, you know. Uh, Where's my camera three gone? Yeah, you know, I'm sitting looking at this screen in a much darker room because if you're working on graphics, it's got to be, the blinds have to be down because can't, I can't really see this screen very well because of all the light. It's certainly not for colour accuracy. And, um, you know, the I go out for a walk on a day like today and I'm looking out there now and, and, and you know, was these incredible blues in the leaves and just incredible colors there's just and the sky and it's it's incredible you know and the shadows are purple on the road and it's walking it's it's so you're walking and i'm literally going it'd be rude not to paint this and at the same time i was in mount julius one day which is a golf club up near you know having lunch in the hotel or whatever and somebody had paintings up of like the 18 holes on the golf course and they were okay but i knew i could do better and they were about 500 quid each and i was going that's the same as my mortgage, you know. I can yeah. do that. So my wife, Orla, very kindly bankrolled me yes. for a couple of years, and uh, I kind of we did have a timetable on. You know, I, you know, if, if it hadn't worked out, I wouldn't be painting now. But I began to sell stuff and so on, and very soon I got a commission to paint. Um, like literally after a year of painting, I had one little show. Well, it was a big show, but a show down which sold well down in um, Limerick in the Dalman Gallery. And um, then, then I, at the same time as that was on, I was kind of applying for this um, huge commission for what I thought was just okay money. See, that was even, I was also coming from the commercial world. My attitude to money was different. I knew it was out there because of where I'd been working. 
a lot of artists don't even realize, you know, that there's money out there. Even when I'm pricing work, I was here pricing work the other day, and I would have, have my family helping me. But my 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 18 year old daughter, who's actually my business manager, really, you know, as I was going, oh, I think maybe six and a half thousand for this sheet, and it goes, um, that's way too low. That will sell in about you know five minutes. I think you need to add a couple of thousand onto that. And I said, really, it's not that big, you know. And she said, it's a really good painting. It'll move. And uh, she's right. It took about an hour or so. Um, and I think we all need somebody in our lives like that, don't we? No, well, I, I have three of them. My two yeah. daughters and my wife. And they will say, no, we are actually bringing all the paintings. They'll go through it, you know. Yes, but yes. She said to me, she said to me, Blaze, remember, you're not trying to sell to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that is sometimes uh, a block that a lot of artists will have. Even, you know. That's a good point. They're yeah. not in the market. To sell, they're not selling to themselves. They couldn't, right. I can't, couldn't afford my own work, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, to get back on track then with the storyline, she so I, I uh, so I began and I got this big commission, which was um, forty thousand punts at the time. But I spent a year in Cork in a camper van painting the machines, the men, uh, and the roads, and that built this studio that I'm standing in with mm. with change. You know, at the time I was very lucky. You know, so while many artists nowadays are really struggling for studio space. I was fortunate to be able to build my own, uh, or rather refurbish a, a falling down shed, you know? Yes. <laughs> and enlarge it, you know? <clears throat> um, so I, I didn't realize at the time, I thought it was going to be like that every year, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I, yeah. I stopped there and... and yeah. um, well, look, why don't we do, do, do just a quick, quick run around the, the studio and just explain where things are and where you work from and... You know what sort of items are there that one one might be? I feel like saying if only I knew where things were. <laughs> ah, well, yeah. Well, do your best. Now, listen. Just before you start, I see Barbara Fitzgerald has her hand up. As a, yeah. presumably Barbara, you want to ask a question. Of if course. you wouldn't mind leaving it till the end, um, you know when when the Q and A is on, and then we'd love you to ask your question, Barbara. Okay. All okay. Right. Okay. Uh, let's so off you, you go. Uh, okay. I'm just going to. I. It's. We we'll just take we we'll take five minutes on this, okay? Right. So behind me is a a big studio easel. Uh, that's a painting I'm supposed to have done by now. <laughs> Outlined. Okay. It's, it's not done. N nice white uh, painting, yeah. Yeah, no, well, it's not. It's actually there's a very faint outline of everything I, of what's going in there. Yeah. Um. You know, I have. Uh, this is the. My plan chest with drawings is basically full of drawings. That's my retirement plan right there. The whole yes, thing. yes. Um, you know, I have... Um, behind these, are then, there's big canvases stacked up behind that easel. Uh, it's, I, I'm working on something totally different at the moment, which is a sculpture, which Eamon knows about. Yeah. So uh, all of these workbenches have just been set up in the last couple of days. Uh, they are covered in a vast array of paints, drills. Uh, I'm doing, Eamon, you have here a major intervention on the sculpture that I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, it involves things like uh, like this. So I built this. This is a little door. All right. I'll just show you that. That's the only teaser I leave. So you can see now that's got the undercoat on it, but it's very sci fi. I think it is very sci fi. Might, yes, Eamon might be ringing me later, go, What the hell are you doing? And it is a bit like that, Eamon. It's what the hell am I doing? So it's got very mad. Yeah. Uh, so I just, that's all I'd say about that. I'll be, I'll be, that, that'll be public in a couple of weeks, but I just don't want to. No, not enough. Fair enough. I know uh, when. Uh, so in a way, all of this trash would be able to have two people sitting here helping me, my daughter and a friend of hers, you know, mm -hmm. handling stuff and looking for bits out of them that we can use, you know. Yes. And uh, so it's not really like it normally is, but also like I never have paintings here really, other than ones that I personally own, like the one that's behind me here, sure. which are portraits of my family, and that's a portrait of my daughter there. Yes. The paintings go out almost immediately. They're either commissions or they're already on the way to an exhibition and they're sold. I like it. Do, do you, do you yeah. mostly do commission work, please? I, 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 at the moment, it's, it's about 70% commissions. In other words, when I have people coming on and saying, do you have something available? And I go, um, 
No, I don't, because I just don't. Yeah. I have certain shows I have, like, for example, I'm, you know, a member of the RHA. I can put six paintings in there. It's, as you would say, in the commercial world, it's a target-rich environment. Mm. <laughs> and they, 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 will, they will be displayed well and they will probably sell there. And yeah. the work I had in last year, like, there's this painting here. I'll show you this one here, this print. Uh, I think we might be seeing this later, maybe not. So that's oh, that's a print of a painting. Uh, yes, you know, but that would have been originally in the RHA. But that painting, by being shown in the RHA, will generate it. I think I've done four commissions from that painting. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's what keeps on happening. So the painting sells very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then people go, do you have one of those or something like that? And I go, uh, no, I don't. Uh, yeah. Would you like one like it? Yes. And that, please, do you, do you work in oils or acrylics? I work uh, uh, in oil on canvas and sometimes on panel. So it's, uh, right. I've been working in oil since I was since I stole my mother's Christmas present of an oil set when she when I was about sixteen. You know. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm very used to them and enjoy them. You know. Yeah, uh, a little. I can turn the camera around if you like. I'm on that one. Um, just... So I have a little mezzanine here. It's an office space up there, as you can see. I yes. Boxes of books. I have a door to get in by. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know. And clutter. I'm really specialising in clutter at the moment. Yeah. As, a, as a matter of interest, do you listen to music when you work? No. Yeah. I, play, I play music, so how does if I listen to music, I go, what chord is that somewhere in the middle of it? Yeah, I know. No, it's interesting okay. because, you know, ha half the artists I, I, I talk to say that they, mm. they can't work without it and others just can't work with it. It's quite interesting. Well, I think, I think um, it's particularly difficult dangerous if you play a bit because you immediately want to dismantle it it's too yeah uh, it's too it's like you know however i do listen to a lot of podcasts you know that are slightly mm -hmm. slightly yeah. boring probably but that's quite deliberate you know i don't want anything too exciting i know yeah yeah uh, and please let, let's let's look at your process if we can because i know you yeah. you set up something there for us to see which is which is very interesting yeah uh, and, and maybe just talk through it okay yeah well i'm just going to show you a quick movie first of all of yeah. uh this painting being made. Yeah. Now, I suppose it does look like as if I'm just, um, filling in in a way but you can see also the the, the looseness of the paint there you know? yes. yes and and normally i would paint this to some extent from life certainly the head you know on the other heads mm -hmm. but beatrice alice hicks is a uh, an engineer and uh, she is unfortunately no longer with us by about i think she died in 1970 mm -hmm. so this is that was part of Accenture's. um uh Women on Walls campaign. I was lucky enough to do another one of those. We'll probably, that? Um, we'll probably see some of that later um, mm -hmm. of women scientists. So, so she's a woman scientist. It's for DCU. It's basically the idea is that there are so many portraits of men. You know, it's important to get uh, female role models uh, onto the walls of our institutions and universities and other places. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have uh, painted that up. But because it's a a posthumous portrait, I would have constructed that entire image from a zillion different sources. So, for example, the jacket that she was standing in and with her back turned to us. I think I have the I have the painting here now. Uh, are you going to show us the, the yeah, proportions, the, the, yes, the way yes, you structured it? Here we are, yeah. But yeah. Here's, the, here's the painting itself. Oops. Um, you know, and... Uh, so the jacket she's standing in is actually my daughter in the kitchen, you know, and I would have photographed that. And I, you see, this is where the computer skills come in. This is completely built in Photoshop. 
for me to work from then. So okay. what you're looking at is you're looking at the firing room in Cape Canaveral on the, at, uh, at the moment of the launch of Apollo 11. Mm-hmm. She was an engineer who had a, a, a valve that basically allowed the Saturn V rocket to fire, to fire a pressure sensitive valve. She invented many other things, but you know, anyway, I won't uh, go on too much about her, but what I'd say is what you're seeing, you can't just start in the top right hand corner of, of any painting that's, well, any painting actually. And I use a lot of compositional tools and tricks to, to build this and make it work at this scale. So that painting was uh, 180 centimeters by 135. So it's, it's taller than me. Mm-hmm. Um, and here you see the construction. You can see actually that that's the photograph thing that I was working from on the right, okay? Yes. But you can see how I uh, use compositional tools that were used by, uh, you know, the old masters from around the 15th century, well, even before that, you know, to to set out the positions of things. So the quarters of the thing gives the position of the eyes at the back of the head. The gold mean gives the position of the eye. Because once you begin setting these up, it begins to give you things. You see now where things begin to kind of line up. So that's the golden mean there, but the golden mean of the golden mean on the right-hand side of the painting gives you the position of the vertical, mm-hmm. which is a strong line. Then the golden means of the, of the height give you the position of the shoulders, the position of the guy's binoculars. So I would literally be moving all these separate parts. This is maybe 60 layers in Photoshop. Everything is cut out like a big jigsaw and I'm moving them around to align with what are uh, important points within the rectangle. So the distances from the edges to the right. And it just, this one is complicated. Uh, so I say that the secondary gun section happens to align with quarters. So that's good. Um, I'm just going to flash through these because uh, I'm going to show you something very beautiful uh, in digression. You're just going to have to bear with me. So Da Vinci's Last Supper, okay? So watch mm-hmm. this. It's absolutely gorgeous. So what he's doing is he's going to rotate the short side, which gives him a square. Okay. So, he, so he's two squares aligning like that. And then when he puts a square in the center, it aligns like that. And it aligns, as you see, with the pictures, the paintings along the walls. Then if you uh, cross that, it gives the position of the ceiling in the, in the roof. And if you cross the big one, it gives the position of the tops of the paintings and uh, you know the corners of the floor down mm-hmm. the, on the ground level. Then if you do that, it organizes the groupings of the figures. Then if you do this, That's a perfect square within a perfect square of the bigger square. It gives you the position of the back wall, the inner windows. And then when you cross the intersections, it gives you the top of the table. I mean, this is just so elegantly beautiful. You know, here, here we are. Please, please, for for the other, for the uninitiated in this, you know, how important is that? Are you, are you saying that, you know, if, if, if in the Last Supper it was marginally to the right or to the left or above or below, that it would disturb the, the visual impact of it in the, in the viewer? Uh, well, I can, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just about to show you how important it is. Uh, uh, just uh, bear with me a second here. Let me just... Uh, so, so here's from here, right? It's just a second example very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the golden section applied to that painting. You can see how it aligns with the window. Can you just frame. explain to, to people what the golden section means? The golden section was the, the, the divine proportion. It, it, uh, it emanates from the Pentagon. Uh, it occurs in nature. You know, um, uh, Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, you know where, he, where he's the guy standing like this? Yes. Okay, so the golden section is from... Uh, the tip of my fingers to my, sorry, I'll just get back in picture here. Yeah. Yep. Tip of my fingers to my wrist mm-hmm. is the golden section of the tip of my fingers to my elbow. Right. So, so it's section. a basic progression of size. Yes. And it happens in plants and the spacing of yep. which tree branches come off. You see it occurring all the time. But it, it, what it really is, it's, it's the, the diagonal of a pentagon divided by its vertice gives you the golden section. Okay. So the Pentagon was much beloved by the ancient ancients as a divine proportion all the way from the from the Greeks as a beautiful shape. But it happens to crop up in nature everywhere. So the orbit of the earth in relation to I think it's Venus to the sun is the golden section of the distance. Yeah. 
So it goes on and on and on. I have, I have a couple of books on it. Mm-hmm. So as it happens, it's get used a lot in painting because they went, oh, this is a lovely, elegant thing. And it gives you a, a thing that's not quite a third. It's not quite a quarter. It's just a beautiful proportion. So most of our Georgian buildings are proportioned in that way in terms of the elevation as it goes up from story to story. It, it, it was used over and over again. So very quickly, here you can see the intersections uh, of the golden section, the important ones mm-hmm. on things, because it provides a focal point. Because if you're just starting with a blank canvas, now this is a bit more complicated than what I'm showing you, but he's really using a, a 12 by 9 grid, which is a musical division system that was uh, was going around in a book by, what was his name? I uh, can't remember, mm-hmm. in, the, in the Middle Ages, uh, or sorry, in the Renaissance, you know, but you see that it just when you begin to align the lines that are in the painting on these ninths and twelfths, so many things line up in it. Mm. This is not an accident. And Vermeer is known as well for change. Like he didn't own a painting that size. He just blew it up to make, to have a compositional function. So here in my own paintings, so this is a, a farmyard scene, but I've divided into quarters and thirds. The thirds are the reds and the yellows are the quarters, and you can see how it aligns with buildings. So I would move buildings around ever so slightly to line up at important points. Mm. Why is this important? I'm just going to, well, there's another one there, that's a portrait we're going to look at later, but you can see again, it's got the, the golden section in the armature in red, and you can see how certain points are lining up with that. This is all quite deliberate and contrived on my part. Okay. But it gives the thing quite a thing. This is the scientist painting I mentioned, thirds, uh, and thing. Now, why is this important, Alan? Here's your answer. In a US study into hospital artworks, they had like 10, they surveyed 20,000 people. They showed that they, they asked them what was the, you know, the best artwork in the uh, hospital. And everybody picked this landscape that's at the bottom here. Mm-hmm. Now, the person who wrote this report didn't obviously know what I know about golden section because I looked at that photograph and I'm going, well, I can see the golden section is straight away. So I measured it and immediately the golden section is there, you know? And, and is that, or that's not exactly a third though, is it? No, it's not a third. The golden section is not a third. It's all, right. third. that's what I was saying. Yeah. It's, it's a better proportion than a third. Gotcha. Um, and the point is that the golden section, if you look at like, you know, you know that photograph of the kiss, all these like really popular photographs, mm. Mm. they've all got the golden section popping up in them because we have an expectation of it. Yeah. In, it, in advance. So that's why I use it, because it immediately sets up um, paintings for me uh, in a way that the internal rhythm of them is correct. Because I say you can't just start sticking things in because they don't line up with anywhere that's important in relation to the rectangle. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? So, so, so this kind of proves that people have a, a sensitivity to it without even knowing why. Now, I don't know which came first. Is it that people from the Renaissance have been constructing paintings using the golden section. Therefore, we think that's a good painting and therefore we're expecting the golden section that they were putting in it. <laughs> or is the golden section a natural law that everybody expects anyhow? Mm. Okay? Mm. Yes. So there, there ended the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> good man. Good man. That was great. No, and I, I just find that interesting because I know there are so many eminent examples of, of work that, that is totally contrary to what you're talking about. Um, and, and I think, uh, you send me send me three of those, and I'll happily show you where what they're using. <laughs> I think we'll throw a few lines over it, and you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you could argue that, but I don't. I mean, certainly anything pre seventeen fifty. Yeah. You know, the other issue is like like this canvas I'm looking at here in the studio, mm-hmm. this big one. You know, yeah. that's three hundred and fifty quid before I make a mark on it. You know, really? So, yeah. If I fuck that up, like. It's a bit of a waste. So you I can paint over it. No, you can't. That's well. That's technically really bad. Never do that. Okay. All right. Sorry. Because because the paint uh, has nothing to grip onto and it'll simply tear itself apart within about yes. ten years. So technically, that's not. A so good is that is that a board blaze? Is it? No, this is canvas. Oh, canvas. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So so you know um, I get them from Holland. They're they're pretty amazing. They're on they're on aluminium and. Um, uh, timber. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just moved to them. I, I, I used timber ones before, but they're much heavier. Um, so these are these are good, you know. Um, yes. But the point about it is, like, I'm very interested in the technique of oil painting and how it works. Um, I use very, very little thinner. 
because that's a solvent. You don't want that getting to your paint. Mm -hmm. So for example, the longest lasting, best preserved paintings we have are probably Velasquez's paintings from, you know, uh, was it 1619 or is it 1519? Mm -hmm. 1619. And also Holbein's paintings with the time of Henry VIII. And it's yeah. due, and I basically use those two techniques and Velasquez is basically using a lot of oil. So a painting by Van Gogh or an Impressionist with a lot of impasto oil paint at the consistency, put on at the consistency of kind of toothpaste is really bad technically because that paint exerts a pressure of about 40 pounds per square inch on the, um, on the canvas and on the other paint underneath it. It grips it mm -hmm. and proceeds to pull as it dries. Yes. And that's why anybody who's an invigilator in a museum sitting next to a Van Gogh is kind of on a sort of a Van Gogh watch because they just bits fall off. Really? And they, you know, ring the, the conservator thing and say, come down here and all the bits fall off. That would happen maybe once every five years. I know. But they collect that up and they stick it back on or maybe, you know, decide what to do. Because mm. that paint in the Van Goghs are, is not dry yet. Whereas the, the Velasquez paintings are in oil, but it's a thin film of oil, very thin mm. film of oil. Yes. Uh, drippy. It's, it's put on at the consistency of a double cream, mm. you know? Yeah. And so... What happened was that in about 1850, around the time of the Impressionists, paint began to uh, be delivered in tubes, like this, obviously. And this was actually the colour men being very generous because what they were doing was they were packing it full of pigment so that the, the medium, so it kind of held together like tooth, toothpaste, but you're not actually supposed to use it like that. That's kind of three times too thick. Because you know the way people are very frustrated with oil paint, they squeeze it out in their palette, and they, they go to paint with it and they get a stroke that goes sort of, so I will show you, I will mm -hmm. demonstrate. Uh, let me pick the brush here. I'll switch to this camera. That one, in fact. Uh, so if you do have this paint, yep. straight out of the tube and you then you know, dip in it, you get that and it just breaks down very fast. Yes. I'm sure you've all been in National Galleries and it's these beautiful long flowing lines by Sargent or all these people. But that's because they've got a ton of oil mm -hmm. in, their, in their paint. Now, where's my little oil bottle? I think it's in my paint box, which would be awkward to get at. So I'm always saying students, you know, not a turpentine painting, it's an oil painting because people use a lot of turpentine sometimes in the earlier stages of their Finish, painting. Yeah. And, and that's not good. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'll just say, if you want it to last 500 years, um, that, is part of my, that is part of my game. I'm, I'm very interested in. So look, you see, look, I've added some oil here. Is that linseed oil? Yeah, cold pressed linseed oil. Okay. And suddenly it moves. So my paintings are very thin in a sense. Mm -hmm. Like I can show it to you online here, but I will not really show you. But suddenly the painting, I can do strokes. I can basically paint like an normal yeah. ink, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, and, you know, so I, I did a lot of reading around this at the beginning, of because I'm obviously a nerd, right? I like computers. I like, you know, so I got deeply into the technical side of, of, of how oil paint should be put yeah. on. So, Blaze, if you do that yeah, and you're yeah. using so much oil, are you not doubling the, the time it takes to dry before you put a second coat? Or is there some yeah. method of making, making it dry faster? You can, if you're in a serious rush, use liquid or, or yeah. alkyl. Yes. Uh, stuff, you know. Uh, and sometimes if I'm under severe pressure, I'll put that in, in the under layers, but the top layer will always be very oily. Okay. Because again, it's to do with the drying time. Yeah. So you want the top layer to be drying more slowly than the lower layers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so there's a really <clears throat> painting called Fat Over Lean. So you want oilier and oilier layers because it doesn't matter if the basically if, if it dries quicker on top, it'll crack. Yeah. You know? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and okay. In weird way. So there you go. All right. Now, please, we're, 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 we're in a, a tricky situation in that it's nearly 11 o'clock. Yes. We should be doing Q&As, but we've got some vi images to look at. So yeah, can we pick through them very, very quickly? Yeah, hurtle through them, yeah. I mean... We'll hurtle I, through them. I, I've so. covered actually what, what, to what I was going to say about a lot of them and what I've been saying yeah. you know, where, where they were from. So just go for it. Off okay. So... This is part of, of the one you did, is it, for the, the machinery? Uh, yes, yeah, so that was the first commission I talked about. That's Cork County Council. Uh, mm -hmm. 
that's an Aveling Barford roller. That's a tarring machine. Um, you know, they they uh, they would park these things up for me, and I would sit there for a fortnight in my camper van in the yard in mm. Skibbereen painting that one, for example. And, yes. Uh, yes. You know, but it was nice. People come along and chat to me. Work thing. This one they parked up for me as well. I think there's a photograph. Maybe you can there's do a photograph of you painting it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is all happy days when I was a bit slimmer uh, back in the. Um, when was that? The recession. <laughs> 1999, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. you know, well, I was very much into uh, doing it all on site, totally, mm. at the time. And yes. same with this. That was a bit 2004. I began to paint farm machinery along with sheds. There was a whole show of sheds and farm machinery. Uh, there you go. Um, you know, that man, I actually just dropped him over a print in a very long standing desk uh, of his own combine harvester. He said to me, would you give me a print of that? And I said, yes, in 2004. So I did yeah. it last month. So there you go. Terrible, <laughs> terrible man to be dealing with. Yeah. Um, I like that one, actually. That is a, a machine I saw in a yard. The painting is called a, uh, an example of Irish ingenuity uh, because... Uh, is it a driller? No, you can see the way that there's the underneath it. There's a tra there's an ordinary tractor, right? Yeah. The two mm -hmm. look at the two wheels. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what he did was often you see farmers standing upright on their own tractor, trying to on an older tractor, trying to see over the nose of it as they spray a crop spray because they're trying to see that they're driving down the tracks that they've made in the crop. Mm -hmm. So the two arms of that would come out. And what he has done is to make life a lot more comfortable for himself. He moved the whole cab and all the steering system and the gears to the front mm. and put a tank where the seat would normally be. Yeah. So this is ingenious. And in any other country, you know, he, I, he told me that he'd been asked to do, build three or four of them when he did for people, you know, just on the side. Mm. Uh, and this is before, like now modern tractors would have a, um, a much steeper uh, bonnet so that they can see and a much higher driving position. Yes, you know, yeah. to make it more comfortable. But this was a guy's solution back in the in the eighties and nineties. I think, you know, it's ingenious. You know, there's yeah. a, now you can see the golden section very clearly there across the wall in the middle. Yes, you and, can. And the subsection of it is repeated on the roof, mm -hmm. and so on. And the position of the front of the cab is on the golden section of the width, and so on. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. so that's where I use it. This one would have no golden sections at all, Alan. You'd be happy to hear. This one, I love it. <laughs> I, yeah, this one is much more organic, and I would have yeah. just started with the drawing that kind of went up and around the road as my own head turned, and I went, okay, that could work. So I went back there for three years in a row in March to paint those on sunny days, you know, like a day like today by the looks of it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I might have left out a out or two on some days, but I needed the shadow in particular on the road to the bottom yeah. right there, you know, and yes. the shadows going. So you wait for the shadow to lock. Like there's I lots of stuff you can do and then you wait for it to arrive. So there's one of the same phase again mm -hmm. in 2004, that, that shed. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the way the um, sides of the shed have been rubbed by the cattle, you know? It's always oh, yes. kind of tell yeah. a story. And actually, yeah. You, can, yeah, you see the, see the way the sides have been rubbed in by the cattle while they scratch mm -hmm. themselves on the corners. Yeah. So uh, the Butler Gallery had now have that painting, which is nice. They just acquired it uh, from a donation, which was great. It came up at auction a month ago. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this one. This one, I showed you that one earlier. The drawing for it, or the, the sectioning of it. So yes. See. Right. So there's rhyme and reason to the way that all the uh, sheds are organised, you know. And I think I like to think that makes for a better picture because also, like, it's a, it's a, that's eight foot wide and three feet high. Mm. So you mm. just can't sort of set off drawing in one corner. No. But if if you were to if I was to take a photograph of that very very place. Mm. Are you telling me that that they wouldn't actually match? They wouldn't actually match. No. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, like we're talking my, maybe a couple of centimeters in the terms, oh, yeah. of things, like so widening the narrowing the gap, widening the gap into the countryside. Yes. Um, things to do with uh, dropping the railing in the foreground slightly down so it wasn't obscuring the view. Okay. Um, yeah. No, it's it's yeah. good. It's good that you give yourself permission to do that, and I think from other artists looking at this. Mm. You know, they, they might be more inclined to be a little more adventurous than to try and be absolutely true to what they're looking at. Well, well, it's just also that in the end, uh, it's the painting that you're making, you know. Mm. Uh, yes. This one is a bit more organic as well. I did a drawing, uh, I have it here in a notebook actually. 
And I yeah. went, ooh, that could be really good. Yeah. Um, it's a well, very unique I, color on the, on the uh, chimneys. On the chimneys, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's, that, I was actually Not there worries. last week. Yeah, I was actually there last weekend. <laughs> on the other side of that building, he's the whole house painted that blue, that green oh, right. yeah. blue, as well as all the stonework that's on the other side of these stone buildings. Everything, crevices, everything, the whole thing painted mm. green. Right. It's an artwork in itself. That's why I didn't paint it. There's no point painting an artwork of an artwork. Generally, it doesn't work. Yes, um, yes. Uh, yeah. And this is the right. large version of the, of the small little study that you did. Yeah, exactly. So you can see again, like the reason I did the little study is I did not want to. And, you know, you'll see, by the way, the upper part of that lake is on the golden section. Yay. <laughs> Spot the golden section. <laughs> so, um, but you can see, also, I did not want to you know, weighed into my 350 euro canvas mm. without knowing what, what ground was I going to put on it, what was going to happen, you know. I, I presume that's the River Nor, is it? No, that's actually up in the V. It's a lake there. Oh. I, I, looked at it. Um, I, I stopped at it. I did that mostly from a photograph during the during the lockdown. I did another little study that I don't have here of it and then did the, the study that I showed you earlier on from photographs was all done here in the studio. Okay. And you see, this is the this is the argument that somebody I, I like painting from life. I enjoy painting people physically, personally in front of me. Yes. Um, something different happens when somebody poses for you for five hours. They they stop posing. You know, you can walk in and take a photograph in half an hour and get what you need. Mm. But they have a kind of a I'm posing now kind of look about them, like me in yeah. a photograph actually. You know, exactly. Whereas, whereas you break down, you know, as you go along, yeah, uh, into uh, a sort of an inner reverie. And if you can catch that while you're painting somebody, then you generally have them, you know. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Just a close up. Yeah. An orchard, uh, the commission there that never mm -hmm. exhibited, you know, sort of thing. So uh, that's another commission, just recent. Uh, that's a I very bravely got that for his to be wife. They only got married about two weeks ago. All right. Uh, yeah. And I, I went down to Westport looking for what he like. So they got engaged on a place called Silver Strand, up from the Silver Wand. He marked the spot on 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 Google Maps for me. You know, this mm -hmm. is not that spot, by the way. So I get down to the car park and I have my cameras, I have my easel painting gear, mm -hmm. and I set out to the spot marked on the map. You know, and as I'm going about. A mile later, I'm exhausted and it's hot and uh, it's further than I thought. He rings me because I, I text him saying I arrived in the car park and I go, yeah, I'm there. I said, could you not have fucking got engaged near the damn car park? <laughs> How long did you walk before you got your nerve up? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, so in the end, we didn't do it of, of the beach uh, and the area. I think I... I uh, his to be partner liked my paintings and liked shed, so I had gone up and down. This is near Lewisburg, and that's Clare Island in the background. All right, I'd gone up and down the peninsula looking for likely candidates. So I think that's a nice, happy painting. And yeah, it's lovely. The clouds lovely. are happy in it. Yes, uh, I am having a what's really a retrospective show of just still life paintings in the Butler Gallery mm. in September. So this will be in it. This is actually up in. Lock vision. That will be all these paintings will be in it. Yeah, um, it's kind of interesting. So I suggest you come and see them in flesh in September. It's opening on September the eighteenth. I think We're going for a couple of months then. Uh, and this will be blind through these. I'm sorry if, if yeah, no, no, that's absolutely fine. I mean, like, yeah. uh, funny enough, there's not much to say about still lives except that they're a really important lab for a painter. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by a lab is all those compositional things you can try out, um, you know, very easily. Yes. Uh, and the it's investment lower. is lower, you know, and your time investment is just not as involved as a portrait. Or what size would that be, Blaze? That one is about a meter by 70. I think it's actually a bit big. It might be 120 by 80. Okay. Yeah. So I like to paint them much bigger than life, you know. So yes. I just put in a few portraits at the end here. Or, sorry, you put in a few portraits at the end. Or yeah. You ordered them that way. That was just so a close up. The, yeah. I showed you the, the compositional tricks going on in that one. That's of Bernard Farrell, the playwright. It's in the Abbey. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of debate between he and I. I spent a lot of time with him, actually, with him actually. And in a funny way, the more time I get to spend with somebody, so we spent maybe six or seven days, I think it feeds into the painting in the end, you know? Yeah. Because uh, he's telling me like what's important to him and I'm sort of pushing it onto the tabletop or into the background behind him, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. 
Um, and that only comes out through conversation, long conversation, you know. So how many how many sittings would you have had there, for instance? Uh, I think uh, it was about five or six. Uh, you okay. know, so we're talking, ele- you know, 11, because that's when I start, till about five every day with, you yeah. know, break for lunch, obviously. But a lot of it was me just, I did some really terrible drawings. Of them, the chat was so good, you know. Mm. But the drawings, it was, you know, so you just, you're just easing through the onion. Yeah. You yes. know, to get to something. And I think that, that's, I'm very happy with that painting. But I mean, like, for example, one of our, our long conversations, and he indeed even sent me a script, is that that uh, jotter that's open in front of him, mm-hmm. you know, it says on it, and you can see it, it says, you know, um, act one, scene one, and there's a line underneath that, as yeah. if he's about to start writing. But he did send me a script for what could go on that page, you know? Yeah. Yes. So he wrote a little play. And then we decided that was, you know, we had a discussion we were saying, well, that's a bit too contrived. So a portrait is always really, ideally for me, a collaboration with me and the sitter where I'm trying to get their best selves, you know, with a whole lot of signifiers around them. I mean, I, I really, uh, this is why when I'm painting these, the, the, the village people and so on that I'll be doing, when I actually get to the project, I'll be putting them in their environments, their work environments, beside mm-hmm. their airplane, beside their horse, on yeah. their horse, because I feel, you know, there's a, there's a, a trend, almost a fashion for doing big head portraits. It's just a head. Yeah. So it's a big abstract thing. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, one of the things when we look at a Velasquez painting is the amount of information. When we look at Holbein's painting of the ambassadors, yes. it's telling us like what crazy clothes those guys wore at the time and so on. I think our descendants will not be interested in big heads of people they don't know. Mm. They just want any information. Yeah. So this, on the other hand, you know. Yeah, you've got uh, your set, theatre set, and yeah, it has it has the name as well as plays mm-hmm. on, the, on the on the on the binders. They're the actual binders that he has his All script right. in. You know, this damn thing at the front is is a is a stage set, yeah. and it's got written on the back of it, and it actually had you know the play that it's for and the stage directions and so on. All right. You know. Yeah. And yeah. So it's kind of like a play within a play within a play. So these are all. Yes. And I feel it's really important, you know, to document because as let's go back, you know, I did try and make documentaries for about eight years because, you know, and I want people, my ideal audience is a social historian uh, in about 500 years time, looking at my paintings going, say all the paintings I did at the school in Carlo, they'll go, well, look, they all showed up in the one room and sat down together. Yes, so, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so I think that's... That's really important. Oh, you know, uh, the scientist, same thing. It's a social yeah. country, really. But also, where is this painting now? You can actually see, well, I don't know about right now, in Japan, yeah. you know, in whatever safety it is, but oh, under sure. normal circumstances, yeah. it's in the lobby of the Royal Irish Academy on Dawson Street, Nassau Street. Dawson Street. Dawson yeah. Street. I've moved out of Dublin that long, I've forgotten which yeah. one's which. I think so, it's Dawson uh, Street. Yeah, so so um, you can just walk in there and say, can I see that? And it's just in the hall there. So, yeah. uh, and what size is it? It's two meters by one meter high, so so there the figures are actually about that mm. high. Yes, okay. yes, okay, yeah. There's a an entire hour long documentary on on YouTube, mm. which was shown on RTE about that painting and Vera Klute's, uh paintings in the same yeah commission. There's there's another lovely video that is available as well, which is one of you doing a um a, a landscape of Waterford, I think, isn't it? Oh yeah, I didn't even include that here because that's a whole. No, I know, but uh, I, I, I love that. I think it was on Nationwide. Yeah, uh, it's to be a sister one for one that was done in the 1700s, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, you know, actually, the video you're talking about, I made that video on because there you go, you see, it's handy to be able to uh, play with the camera. <laughs> so it's so um, professionally done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, but that's part of the game, isn't it? You know. So anyway, um, yeah, so that that video shows the the painting itself is down in is it was it. Uh, you can see it in the, is it the Theatre Royal? I'm kidding, the theatre is in Waterford, mm-hmm. that's yeah. in front of the Bishop's Palace. So it belongs to the Waterford Museum and mm-hmm. it's in the lobby there and you can see the painting there. And Una Seeley is currently doing another one for them, a big portrait because they have, uh, the OPW are, are, are commissioning them. So right. yeah. yeah, again, again, like the, the, the thing I did in Waterford, which you can see on my, I think it's on my website, maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
you know, for me, it was about documenting everything that was on the sea, on the waterfront there. So every building. So that when somebody looks in 50 years, they say, oh, there's Shaw's, they're gone now. And there's oh, yeah. Them. Yeah. It's very, very detailed, but yeah. lovely and loose at the same time. Yeah. Anyway, are your parents, am I right? Yeah. These are my parents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, uh, my mother on the right, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we haven't um, reversed it. It's all right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it's funny, my mother said to me, um, you know, the little spiel I gave there a minute ago about the portraits are a collaboration. She came to a talk I was giving once, talk about, you know, the way I collaborate with the sitter and ask them what do they want and what's interesting to them. And she says to me after this, she said, you never asked me what I wanted in my portrait. And I said, you know, you're right. I never did ask you or Alan what you wanted in. in uh... You sort of knew her well, though. Well, it wasn't just that. It was just like I was going, it's my painting. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really for you. I mean, she has it at the moment, but and wasn't uh, this selected for some? Yeah, it was. It uh, I came second in the Zurich Portrait Award. Zurich, yeah. Joined second, whatever way you want to call it. So I got a. Uh, it was. It was. Um, they had such fun with it being in the National Gallery for three months. You can imagine all their friends saw it. Uh, it was great, you know. But also, I just felt that's the way you see the door into that room is on the right of the viewer, so, and that coming from the hall. So when I come into that room, that's what they're generally doing. And the, then after a second or two, because you know the way when anybody's in a computer, they take a second before they look around at you because they're finishing their email or looking yeah. at whatever vital piece of social media, <laughs> then they turn and look at you. So I had seen that for maybe 10 years and they're quite, you know, computer literate, obviously for people who are 80. Yes. And, uh, you know, of course, my mother's regret was, could I not have tidied the kitchen? I was going, no, that's the whole point. You can't go in and tidy up the counter. I like all that stuff, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and a lot wonderful, of people, Wonderful painting. Yeah. A lot wonderful. of people remark on the fact she's the handbag down by her. Of, of course. Side. And I should, if you want to flick, are we there? We're kind of coming to the end. Are we? Oh, sorry. You know, no, we, we haven't. There's one, one more. Oh, yeah. Because... Oh, yeah, that's the one I was just about to talk about. So yeah. I just did that last month. Oh, did you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah and... Yes. That's Orla, my wife on the right there, and my daughter Morgan. And mm. uh, it's all about the dog, of course, Archie, um, yes. who's one of two. So my other daughter is going, Well, Justice is going to be in the one with me. <laughs> the other dog. But it's just, I, it's some, I didn't really notice it, you know, she has her handbag down there beside her as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes. Something a bit recurring uh, theme here. I mean, here. I knew what I was doing, and then at the same time, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, but I like the the brightness and the color of it. I mean, I can show you that painting here now. Do yeah, I'll, I'll get out of this now. Yeah, and thanks for putting that together, Alan. It's brilliant. Oh, it's oh, really oh. appreciated. Pleasure. Um, so uh, yeah, do I, show us that. Yeah, uh, I just need to, and then we go into the Q and A. Yeah, I just to give you an idea of the scale of it. It's that size. Yeah. I'll switch it. Yeah. Big, I'm going to switch over to the other camera. This one here. Yeah. Yeah. And you see it there. Yeah. No, you can't. I'll just bring it a little nearer, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. You can see the size of it like in relation to me, so it's 80 by 80 centimetres. Yes. So, you know, the lemons are like just the size of my my hand, you know, but it was very enjoyable. Go closer here, just focus on it. It's a yeah. bit dark, is it? No, no, no. It's, well, it is a tiny bit compared to reality, but you can certainly get the well, detail of it anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, just... I really enjoy painting these little things here, and she's the painting's yeah. called Patience, or likes painting Patience. Yeah. Well, I thought that was I, I like a pun in the title. I also like I also like saying exactly what's in the painting. I don't. So is, is that going to go up in the kitchen? Uh, no, that'll stay out here. I will it? Uh, okay. It'll probably end up in the RHA or I'll enter it into the BP, I suppose. Yes. I'm looking yes. at it and like, what do I what do I need to improve to make this competition worthy? But yeah. it's, it's it's pretty much finished. But it's just uh, uh, it's you know mm. so, like just to shock you, it took me uh, five days to paint that. Good. Yes. So yeah. I'm I'm also very fast. I like I have a joke about um, the art world. You know, it's like the wild west, it's full of the quick and the dead. <laughs> yeah. Blaze, okay. before we get on to questions. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you what I ask everybody, which is, who is your favourite artist? What what piece of art would you love to have up in your sitting room? I prefer the second part of that question because that's much easier to answer because I know what I'd steal, whereas 
you know. Well, you'd have to steal this one, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Well, this one is also like a nice size. You get it under your arm. You might even get out of the building with it if they were. Okay, so there wasn't there, a large, like, yeah. A, a Coro painting called The Bridge at Nar- Narnie, which is in the Louvre, I think. I definitely saw it in the Louvre. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you managed to. Can, I did, I did. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm just, uh, just give, me, give me a second. I'm going to, I have that window to set to one side. And what is particularly beautiful about it, I suppose I alluded to things that attract me to painting. You see the shadows under the bridge, the shadow yeah. of the bridge across the river. Mm-hmm. So it's a beautifully judged light purple, which is the um, opposite, if you like, on the colour wheel from the yellow ochre that the river generally is. Yes. And it's absolutely just the juiciest shadow in the history of painting, mm-hmm. uh, particularly when you see in, in, in life, as well as like, you know, in other words, to make that shadow work, everything else has to be um, judged, the tones and the, you know, the saturation, the color hues, everything. Sure. Just yeah. to make that bit work. And often that's what mm-hmm. paintings are about. It's kind of having all the, the, the parts working just to make the one really interesting bit that originally attracted you to it click. Mm. Yes. So, yeah. so for me, um, <clears throat> so I'd say that's about the size of an A4 page. It was done from life on the spot. He did a much bigger one, the studio painting, which is it's fine, but that one's just very vital and immediate. And I mean, I have actually a print of it in, in my in my parlor, you know, so yeah. uh, oh, I, I would nick the, the thing. Yeah. You know, and that's that's in the Louvre, am I right? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it's in the Louvre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's... Right. let let me read out a couple of messages. Um, uh, Jacinta Monk says, "I love Blaze's ir- irreverent attitude. One of the best teachers I've ever had. So inspirational. One of our greatest artists." Hi, hi, Jacinta. Nice to hear from you. I hope you're I hope you're well. Uh, I hope I hope your daughter's music career has installed totally. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with the pandemic, we used to have chats about that. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. Funny. She says, Be- best of luck with this interview. Blaze loves doing all the talking. She likes <laughs> me a day off, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Desmond Kenny says to everybody, uh, is the device you use when painting outdoors a, met- a method to measure the golden section? Yes, it is. I have one here in front of me. I have, have two. Um, I will just flick to this camera here. Where's that? Oh. Is that a proportional divider? Yeah, and I, I actually sell these on my website. There is a proportional divider that I that I have designed. It's slightly, it has like what's really interesting with one of these is if you if you go down the golden mean, which is there, I have it marked one of these holes. So I got these laser cut and I would have designed this. So that there mm-hmm. is the golden mean of the overall length. And so if the bolt are the, you know, how would you call it? The axis of yes. the two sticks is mm-hmm. at the purport, at the golden mean. So I just want to get this off. That's right. Uh, then, yeah. If I do this, uh, sorry. Yeah. The short one is the golden mean of the big one. Of the, of the big one, yes. yes. So when I hold that to a small canvas yeah. over its height, I just flip that around and that gives me the golden mean immediately without doing any measurement. Very clever. Very clever. And that's only part of the multifunctionality of these two pieces of stick with the bolt, bolt through. <laughs> Which are available like, on my website. I, I teach people how to use it in the yeah. life thing of, in the RHA and so on, you know. Yeah. And I'm, we, reluctant, we, I'm reluctant to sell them to people without them having spent an hour with me. Because well, I think they'd be useless. With, <laughs> but that's it. Like, like, it's kind of you're missing out on half the, the yeah. story. You know? yeah. Anyway. Um, Okay, Gillian says, great art pieces. They're really good. Great humor and a really good interview. Dad, I need to go now. See you later. <laughs> okay. Guess who that's from? Alico says, I would listen to Blaze all day. Incredibly interesting and brilliant work. Thanks for that, Alico. Okay. Um, Angie says, fascinating studio visit. Met Blaze on Cape Clear recently, en route to Fastnet. He was painting on Hair Island. Uh, look forward to seeing those paintings. So she was sitting at that table on the that with um, when your man was getting engaged. Nessa, yeah, yeah, Nessa Durkin must have been. <laughs> there you are. Uh, um, Yvonne says, uh, "I like the long panoramic landscapes 
with or without the golden section. Yes, Eva, I agree. Yes, I, I'm about to actually order up a load of canvases that shape, sort of two to one. So, yeah. one, so like, say, a meter by 50, that kind of thing. It's a really interesting shape. And, of course, we're all, we're all mentally prepared for it from cinema, you know, so. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Um, Eilish, and I hope I'm correct, or I'm correct in pronouncing your name that way. Um, I remember Blaze at NCAD. I was told that I couldn't paint a door by one of my tutors. I mean, I presume she means a real door as against a painting of a door. Uh, it took me almost 30 years to return to creative practice after NCAD. De I Dennis says, brilliant paint. talk. Really enjoyed Golden Section and the Rule of Thirds. Um, it is a difference between good a good photograph and a smart phone snap. Video <laughs> technique, brilliant. Uh, Jacinta, thanks, Dennis. Jacinta says, um, a long way from the house painter, please. Did you yeah, do any yeah. house painting at all, did you? Uh, I, I discovered, you know, the best buy I made during the pandemic was a, a uh, there was a, in Lidl, there was a, a sprayer mm -hmm. for 20 euro and you fill the thing. So I have, I live in a, you know, a farmyard here mm -hmm. and all of the, walls are pebble dash and they're absolute pain in the ass like it took me basically oh. three days to paint yeah. by hand when i did this about 10 years ago and i just so i bought the paint about two years ago before or long before the pandemic two years before the pandemic never got around you know 30 days mm -hmm. oh this is going to take a week just to do that one wall out there and uh saw this sprayer i highly recommend it with like 40 minutes i had the whole wall done it's like it's serious 40 meters long you know and it was like zoom yeah. i was going Whoa! Brilliant. <laughs> you've just you've just inspired me to do something because I was going to get a roller, one of these fluffy rollers, at it, and I think that would probably take three or four days compared to. Yeah, no, I mean, minutes. I bought that thing at the beginning of the pandemic, and I say, uh, you know, uh, I even, I think it was just before it, I went, oh, I get that spray. You never know. I didn't really expect much from it, but it's and you can really be quite accurate. I thought I have to be sort of like masking off whole yes. chunks of the wall we just get close in and you can use it like a, like an aerosol you know? and you really you, you yeah. probably have to put have loads of sheets on the floor would you well i mean i did put a plank just along at the bottom of the wall so it didn't spray, spray all the gravel i know I, I wouldn't suggest you do this indoors without oh, clearing no. everything because it's no, 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 no. there'd be paint particles floating around. totally outdoors marianne yeah. says great talk thanks alan and blaze uh, martina thank you marlon says wonderful talk thank you very much blaze and alan um carol says were you one of the judges this year on the annual submissions. I remember the first time I met you uh, in the RHA, your Range Rover had died and I gave you jump leads. I love the painting of your wife and daughter. Well done. Do you use gimbal for your videos? Carol, enjoy the sunshine. I do use That's Carol Shoebottom. So yeah. I know Carol. Hi, Carol. Nice to hear from you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, but that's because I have a card that starts now. <laughs> <laughs> OK, moving on. Liam Madden, um, Blaze's talent and technical knowledge uh, is mind blowing. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I read a lot of books. I would recommend one in particular if anybody's interested. Sure. Well, maybe two. When you're looking for that, I'll, I'll, I'll read on. Yeah. Uh, Claudia says, thank you, Alan and Blaze. Great morning. Um, Eilish says, uh, another great, interesting episode. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, right. Now, um, I'm going to ask people, if they want to ask a question in person, Artist Materials by whom? Emma Pierce. Emma Pierce. The new edition. Uh, yeah. The Complete Source Books. That's really, that's about how to stretch canvases, how to gesso panels. Yeah. The, you know, the she's very good on the correct technical way. You know, she talks about the thing, the things I was saying about oil paint. She yes, talks about that a good bit. It's not a a you know how to draw a book in any mm. way. It's completely bullet points, very fast about everything. You know how to how to how to make watercolor, how to make oil paint. Okay. if you're so inclined, which I did do at one stage, it's easy right. actually. Um, now, Barbara, you have your hand up there. Would you like to ask a question? Well, I just have admired Blazer's work for so long, so many years. And now, having passed his house so regularly, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to see inside the studio because I live up the hill near Coppin Crossroads. Oh, well, well, do call in someday. Oh, could I? For a Love to. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, hopefully I'll be here, but, you know, I'm generally here. I'm stuck here for... for several weeks now till September except for that bit in the middle where I'm doing the, the uh, 
Are you in my village then? Technically, you could be a victim. No, uh, not really. I'm six <laughs> kilometers. No. <laughs> I'm not really. No, I'm, I'm out of the I'm I'm out of that but village. I, you're, but you're, I'm glad you mentioned the Butler Gallery because I think everyone who hasn't seen it should try and get to see it soon. It's yes. brilliant. Yes, it, it is. And uh, I'd say I'm very fortunate to uh, have got a show there. But I'd say I'm also going to be sitting in the garden. If you want to come down and see Richard Moss's thing, you could wander Lovely. out have a cup of coffee in the cup in the thing. And between the 7th and the 14th, I'll be working hard from 11 till 4, painting whoever I have uh, managed to persuade to sit from the village. I actually have all seven people sorted already. It, things are changing. I used to have to really twist people's arms and now they're going, that'd be an honour. I'm going, really? <laughs> Can they keep it? <laughs> okay, anybody else like to ask a question? Yeah. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I can now. Yes, yes. Ladies, you were, you, were you one of the judges this year? Is oh, yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. no, thank God. Because okay. uh, <laughs> when, when I end up dealing with her, what happened to my piece, you know? No, 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 it wasn't about that. It was just, uh, I was wondering about the... Um, how it was to do it all online, but you don't know, so that's fine. Well, I know from last year, so, uh, um, and I have been talking to Colin a little bit. Yeah. I think, like last year, there was even slightly more pieces, it was 4,700. Wow. wow. And this year there's 4,200, so it's really a lottery, a horrific lottery now, I yeah. think, because they'll be sitting in a dark room with the screen. It takes them a week. I'd say each wow. image of a work is probably up for five to 10 seconds. Right. So, because they just cut, you know, to get through that number. It, so it's it's a it's a bit of a bloodbath, really. I think you know. And on the other hand, so the disadvantage, as I say, is that now there's a lot of people. But the advantage for a lot of those people is that they're sending in work from, um, you know, the, uh, the way out west when they wouldn't have been able to submit work when they had to deliver it in person. Sure. So it became a very sort of Dublin centric show. Yeah. More so in the past, you know what I mean, are only the very determined. Uh, so in a way, that diversity is a good thing, or that opportunity, if you like, is a good thing. But it is, the numbers are beyond, like I was the one who bloody well wrote the paper for having a digital submission. I thought it would go down. I thought it would put people off. So we would have had 2,500 entries physically. And as soon as it went digital, it went straight to 4,500. So... Great. You know, it's good, but it's, 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 given that there's only going to be 300 pieces chosen out of that, it's really tough on the artists. You know, there's so many people I know who are good artists, uh, both extremely talented amateurs, right up to professionals. I've seen their work who have got the, the bums rush, as it were. So. Um, but just to thank you so much for your time, Blaze. I know, I know you put a huge amount into, into this uh, and we really do appreciate it. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm getting quick at it. Yes, <laughs> you are. You are. So look, the best of luck in your endeavours. I know you've got exciting times ahead of you. Uh, all sorts of different projects. So we wish you well, and we look forward to 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 seeing your your work in the future. Great. Uh, and we'll we'll keep in touch with that. Yeah, and and thank you very much for having me, Alan. And thank you so much uh, for so many people showing up to see me. Uh, go from through. Canada, from Canada to Australia. Yes. Yeah. Stop tour of, of everything. So thanks everybody for coming along this morning. Enjoy the day if you can, and don't forget the sunblock because by Jesus, you're going to need it. It looks like you know. <laughs> exactly. even if you're inside. Blaise, Blaise, Alan, just before we go, can I yes, just say, um, uh, Blaze Blaze did a very interesting film on the river with himself and myself talking about painting. Yeah, and it's just another side of. Blaze's amazing abilities is this ability to actually draw out for 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 me as an abstract painter and Blaze as a as a figurative painter how we're approaching the same landscape landscape but we're using similar techniques and getting totally different different sides of the coin if you like yeah I, I, um, uh, he is an extraordinary filmmaker on top of being an extraordinary artist so I would just like to get people to have a look at some of his films up on YouTube because they are superb. Yeah, well, a Eamon, Eamon and I, as you may have gathered, are talkers, so we're well matched. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably those links you're talking about, Eamon, um, Blaze, would they be on your website? 
I think so. I, if you just Google Blaze Smith on YouTube, you'll on YouTube. Hit my channel and yeah. uh, you'll see Eamon's thing is starts with a guy walking down a leafy path. That'll be him, you know. Uh, that's the only. I mean, I'd actually like to make more films about artists. Um, uh, you know, I, I very much admire what you're doing, Alan. It's a brilliant thing, you know. But I, I think, um, you know, what you wanted me to do is showing around the studio. You can actually, if you come and film somebody, you can really dig, dig into what they're painting, you know. So yeah. I'm intending to visit Eamon soon to make a film about Eamon, and because uh, he's got a great studio and lots of stuff going on. And he's that's right. Yeah, no, we've we've uh, been there, and he's, he's a great developer, so I don't even have to, you know, queue him up. <laughs> Awesome. Oh yeah, no, thanks <laughs> everybody. And I say thanks everybody so much for turning up. It's really nice to see everybody on such a sunny day. Okay, yeah. indoors. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay, take care.